God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. And yes. once again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord on the Lord's day. Yes, sir. And I've uh, got a few things. I just want to housekeeping or whatever you want to call it. But I uh, just want to, uh, as I stated Wednesday night, once again, just thank uh, all the family at Suitland and, and friends and neighbors for the cards and the letters and, and, uh, and all the words of encouragement. Uh, as uh, some of you may know, um, a, a week ago from last Friday, we finalized my mother in Texas. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, many of you, uh, in, in response to us during that time of bereavement, were uh, just very supportive and encouraging. Just want to express on behalf of the Maxwell family um, our appreciation. And uh, as I was telling them, uh, you know, it was a, a very uh, special, I guess you said, one might say if there's going to be a funeral, that's how it should be. Uh -huh. uh, where you have uh, one that is passing on have an obituary that's in the presence of the people who come to the funeral. Uh, you had uh, generation after generation of those who have been raised in the Lord and faithful to God. And, and even those of the third generation was declaring at, at that the fourth generation, their children were going to be raised to be faithful with God as they had learned from their great grandmother. So, uh, so uh, you know, and then we got up uh, and uh, normally have somebody sing. Well, the 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 uh, uh, bereaved family got up and did the singing. <laughs> so, man, that's a strange film. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we sung some of the songs off of our CD that were favorites of hers in honor of her and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, and so, uh, but uh, we are just thankful that because of Christ. Yeah. And, you know, like Paul says, if God be not risen, if Christ be not risen, oh, we, we'd be some miserable folks. Yeah. Amen. But he died on Friday. Yeah. They buried him in the tomb and he rose early Sunday morning. Amen. Because of that, we can deal with times like this with hope and great confidence. Amen. Amen. Not only did we have uh, one uh, that uh, passed on, but we even had a baptism at that film. Uh, uh, brother Lloyd and Pam Maxwell, their daughter uh, Lauren, was baptized. Uh, uh, we, we, we had the funeral, we had the repass, and the right. Right at the end, latter part of the repast is that somebody wants to be baptized. And uh, so we had a baptism. So it was, it was quite a unique event. Right. Once again, we're thankful. Right. I'm going to, basically today, I'm going to uh, uh, introduce uh, a, a message. On, and uh, we had a, had a great time at the men's retreat uh, yesterday, the Mid-Atlantic Men's Retreat. And we talked about being great men of God. And, and uh, we talked about uh, good is not good enough. And uh, so I talked about the uh, the good man on Friday, on Thursday night, rather, and then I talked about going from good to great uh, the rest of the weekend, and so we had a great time. Uh, and on this afternoon, I've got a preacher run to Baltimore, install a couple of elders and a deacon, and then run back so we can have fire on the beach. <laughs> We talk about fire on the beach this this evening, amen. amen. So I'm just going to introduce uh, this. I, I thought about this topic during this time because you know this is the election time of year, and 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 the news and media and all that's covered with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and and folks are all talking about uh, elections. And so uh, the question we will eventually get to in this series is how do I get elected? Because in our text, Paul talks about the elect of God. Yes. The elect of God. And then, if you join me in Romans uh, chapter uh, 11, uh, uh, where he was talking to the Jews and uh, about the fact in, in um, verse 5, he says, Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Now what Paul says in the first part of 11, he says, now look, I'm not disregarding Jews. I'm not counting Jews out. I also am a Jew. I also am from the Jews. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin, so I'm not counting Jews out. 
He says, God has not cast away His people. God has not cast you away. It's not that God has cast you away and because I'm preaching to Gentiles. I'm not saying that God has cast you away or that God has rejected the Jews. That's not what I'm saying. Paul says, but it's kind of like this. I know you've read your Bibles. You know, they had the Old Testament. I know you read your Bibles, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, about Elisha. You know that Elisha had the, had the battle on Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And remember the prophet of Baal and the prophet of Asherah were mm -hmm. there. And Elisha told them, all right, look, we want to see who's God. Okay? Now, it's a, it's, it's a shame when God's prophet has to come to God's people to prove who God is. God's prophet is coming to God's people to prove who God is because they have got hooked up with somebody else. And so he says, look, I tell you what we're going to do. We'll have these altars and we'll build these things up and we're going to offer up a sacrifice to our gods. You to your gods and me to the God of heaven. And you know the story. They did the, the, the altar. and Thank you, sir. They did the altar and they prayed and jumped all over and, and all of that all day long until late in the afternoon. And Elijah says, maybe he's asleep. Or maybe he's gone somewhere. Or maybe he's out of town. Maybe he's forgotten all about you. Now, even though that's, that's uh, 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 sarcasm and, and, and almost insulting, it's a shame that some Christians today treat God just like that. I didn't expect a whole lot of amens, but I... <laughs> because sometimes we will treat God like He's on vacation and we got to handle our stuff all by ourselves. Sometimes we'll treat God like He's asleep and we got to try to wake Him up so He'll do something for us. Sometimes we'll treat God like He did not know what was going to happen to us today. He's still stuck in yesterday and we got to catch Him up so he can get caught up with us, so he can handle our struggles and deal with our problems. And so we treat him like, and so what he, what he was doing is, he was talking about, you know, you know, talking to their God like it has human qualities. And so he said, maybe he's asleep, but then he says, all right, look, you've done that long enough. It's my turn. And so he prays, and God laps up the water, they soak it down, he laps up the water and all of that. And so then Elijah kills the priest, cuts their heads off. Not only those who are worshipers of Baal, but Jezebel's priest as well. Mm -hmm. Those who uh, were uh, uh, um, worshipers of Asherah and, and took, took, they took their heads off as well. And Jezebel says, I'm going to do to you before the sun set. I'm going to do to you what you did to my prophets before the sun goes down. Elijah takes off and runs and, 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 and fearful for his life. And finally, what Paul talks about here is when he makes the appeal to God, he says, God, I'm weary, I'm tired, I'm done. He says, I have, your people have torn down your altars. They have killed all your prophets. I'm the only one left. So go ahead and take my life. And so what Elijah did was Elijah, after he had eaten and everything, he lay down to sleep with the idea that God was going to take his life while he was sleeping. <laughs> See, Elijah was thinking, okay, God has fed me and the ravens and all that. I had, I, you know, I'm full now. And I'm, I'm talking to God. Look, God, go ahead and take me to. I'm just going to go ahead, go to sleep, and you can just take me up out of here. Mm -hmm. And so what Paul was saying is, when Elijah made that appeal to God, God says, wait a minute, Elijah. You need to understand that you are not the only one. Because Elijah said, I'm the only one left. Amen. He says, God says, you're not the only one left. Amen. I have 7,000 in a cave that have not kneeled to Baal. Right. What Paul was saying is, Paul says, brethren, like it was then, so it is now. He said, then, he said, the Jews had lost their religious minds. They were worshiping idol gods and worshiping Baal and worshiping Jezebel's idols and they were doing all of that but God looked down on all of them but God had elected. Come on now. Come on. He had 7,000 and one that were elected. 
And so he says, and like it is then, it is now. He says, brethren, you won't hear the truth. Notice what he says in chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to themselves to the righteousness of God. Paul says, brethren, like it was then, so it is now. You know the story of how the Jews had turned from God and would not accept God. And God looked down and all he had was 7,001. And what Paul is telling them, he says, even so then as, as, as uh, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Just like it was then, there is a remnant. Now, the word uh, um, election, uh, ekloge, means picked out. Means God has picked out. So when we talk about election, and as he talks about the saints, those who are who believe in Christ Jesus, who believe in the gospel, who have accepted Christ as Savior, who have recognized their sins, who have come to Christ in repentance, who have confessed Christ to be Savior, who went down in the watery grave of baptism with Christ and rose up new creatures in Christ, they are the picked out. Amen. And when it comes to being picked out, the, the election, God determined the election before the foundation of the word. Amen. So it's not the fact that God says, okay, let me pick some out. God determined who would be the picked out. Amen. Now, a person says, well, you know, how do I, I want to get elected. How do I get elected? But I'm just going to point out a few things and, and then we'll, we'll carry this thing on uh, next week. I mean, week after rather. Uh, but uh, how do I get elected? Well, uh, first of all, you have to understand that when it comes down to the polls or the ballot, the minute you are born, you're on the ballot. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to get some cardboard signs with your face on it and, and nail it out on the street corners and attach it to the telephone. You don't have to do any of that. When you are born, you're on the ballot. Amen. What you wanted to what you want to do is you want to get voted on. Amen. Now here's the strange thing about these polls. Now I know on the, when election day come, you will have a multitude of people going to the schools and, and so forth and so on to their polls and, and casting their votes. However, on this poll, you won't need a multitude of buildings. No. You won't need a multitude of little voting slot things or all that kind of stuff because in these polls, there are only three that vote. Amen. In other words, where the vote counts. Amen. There'll be a lot of people voting but there are only three votes that count. Amen. Now see, I know your father may cast a vote in for you, but his vote don't count. Amen. And your grandma may throw a vote in for you, but that vote don't count. Sister, brother, cousin may cast a vote in. Your boss man, neighbor next door, somebody may cast a vote in for you, but you need to understand, with this election, that vote don't count. Amen. 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 Good, good. Pastor, Reverend, Doctor, Deacon, Holy Man on the left side or the right side of the road, church, can cast a vote in for you. But the truth of the matter is, his vote doesn't count. There are, there's only three that the vote counts. Amen. The Father, yes. Son, Holy Spirit. Now here's the thing, you won't have to count numbers in terms of how many votes you got. You won't say, well, maybe I got two and then one against. Or one for and two against. Or, two, or, 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 or all three for and, and you know what I'm doing. You won't have to worry about any of that because when it comes down to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they all cast the same vote. Amen. They all cast the same vote. So if you want to be picked out, 
And the question is, you know, I, I, am I in the picked out group? Now when Paul says now in the time of, of Elijah, he said, you know, it was only 7,001. There's a whole lot of folk on the planet at that time. Mm -hmm. And primarily and he's, talking about, he's talking about Israel. There were a lot of folk in Israel at that time. A lot more than 7,001. There's probably about 3.5 million that went into the land of, of Canaan. And the Bible talks about how they spread and grew and spread and grew mm -hmm. and conquered and conquered and spread and grew. But, and this is during the time of kings, however, God had only picked out 7,000 7, and one. And so when it comes down to uh, the, the, the ecloge, when it comes down to the elect of God, those who are picked out, the key is, is that you're in a position where you can get the vote of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit today. Uh, but when it comes down to uh, what Paul was telling them, he said, look, it's not God has cast you away. It's not that God does not want you. Point is, is that you are not worthy to get the vote. Amen. Amen. You're, not, you're not worthy of the vote. I know you might have a lot, a lot of people on your campaign trail. There might be a lot of people proclaiming your greatness and your goodness and all of that stuff in their eyes. But you have to understand you don't qualify to get the vote. God is not going to pick you out. There are some folks who determine their saved condition based upon declarations made by men. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Billy Graham used to stand in football stadiums and make that declaration for folks all day long. Yep. He used to go to the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. And they would have thousands and thousands and thousands in the Cotton Bowl. And you would have people come and they would consider themselves voted on or elected based upon what Billy Graham said. Uh -huh. Well, Billy Graham's vote... Don't count. Don't count. So if I want to be elected, if I want to be the picked out, I need to understand what are the qualifications based upon the three votes on, that do count. And so I want to know what, 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 what are their recommendations, what are their requirements in order for me to get their votes. You know, politicians a lot of times when they talk about getting votes, they'll say, you know what, I'm going to lower taxes. Improve schools, better education. I'm going to take from the haves and give to the have nots. But I'm going to give the have something too, because if I don't, I won't get their vote. I'm going to do this for this group and that for that group, and I'm going to do this. Now, they don't know what they're able to do. They come up with an idea and send it to Congress. And depending on whether they're a Republican president with a Democratic Congress, depends on how much they're going to get done anyway. You know? oh, there's a whole lot of strings attached to the package. They don't talk about the strings, they just talk about the package. Say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Now, a lot of times in this process, when it comes to man's salvation, uh, there are those who will make declarations about packages. Amen. They'll make declarations about packages, but there's all kind of strings attached, and when you open the package, there's nothing in it. <laughs> because again, there's only there's only three votes that count. Yes, sir. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because the election is an election of grace. Now God did it this way. This is how God came up with the plan. God planned, Paul says in Ephesians 1, that this is how we're gonna run this election. If you want to get my vote. All right. All right now. If you want to get my vote, you have to be in the sun. Right. If you're not in the sun, you don't get my vote. Right. And the only way you're going to be in the sun is that you must accept him as your savior. Amen. Now, if you're not going to accept him as your savior, you don't get my vote. Amen. And, and when you accept Jesus as your savior, you will be in his body. Amen. And his body is the church. So if you're not in his church, you don't get my vote. You can be in a church and get their vote, but their vote don't count. You can go down to the Baptist place and you can get their vote, but their vote don't count. You can run up to the Methodist place and get their vote, but their vote don't count. Because the only time the 
vote is going to count as when I vote. And I'm only going to vote if you are in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians chapter 1, 1 through 10. And Paul says all things are summed up in Christ Jesus. That's verse 10. And so when he talks about all of the redemption, all he says in him, in him, in him. In him, in him. Verse 10, he says, the point is, God has summed up all things in Christ Jesus. You want God's vote, you need to be in the church. Amen. Not a church. Yeah. The church. Amen. God says, now, the only way you're going to know how to be in Christ is you got to follow the instruction book. Anybody, anybody vote in here? You, you, you go up and, and the folks are standing out with the little... The little, 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 little uh, uh, brochure. Mm -hmm. And the brochure says, now, are you a Democrat? Mm -hmm. And it says, vote here, vote here, put a box here, box here, box here, box here. These are the people you need to vote on. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all know about that. Some of y'all know about that. God says, the only way you're going to select the right person is that you must follow the instruction book. Amen. Only way you're going to be in a position so you get my vote is you got to follow the instruction book. Well, well Lord, what, what, what's some of the stuff in the instruction book so I know how I'm picking the right Christ, the right church, the right place to be in to get your vote. Well, he says, now, what you have to understand is that, that, that I, I sent God the Son to give you the information. Now, you need to follow the information in order to get my vote. Now, some of the things we read in the book of information that it says, now Jesus says, go ye, preach the gospel to every creature. As in Mark 16, 15 to 16. He that believes and he is baptized shall be saved. Now, the salvation doesn't come until you fulfill the process. It doesn't come halfway through the process. If you got a book that says it happens halfway through the process, throw that one down. Amen. Because that won't get you where you need to be. Amen. Uh, the book says that unless you abide by the instructions of the book, you will never. I didn't say possibility. You will never get God's vote. You know, it says that in the book. Yeah, it says that in, in, in the instruction book. If you don't follow this book according to how it is written, you will never get God's book. So where is that at? 2 John 9. Whosoever transgress and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. You will never get my vote. I said, well, what if I... Um, what if I, I kind of read a little bit and kind of get the basic ideas and, and simply incorporate that into a religious uh, uh, process? If, if I come up with a, a theological ideology that reflects Christ and considers God, and, and if I come up with the understanding, a basic understanding of, 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 uh, of what God expects of life, and if I come up with the idea and kind of recognize his discussion on love and, and, and kind of grasp the concept uh, of, of, of Christ on the cross and, and then with all of that understanding establish my own perspective of how salvation is in order to gain more people. I'm doing it all for God. How does that work? Well, you need to check the instruction book. Instruction book according to the messenger. Jesus says, on that day, many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name cast out demons. In your name done many wonderful works. We recognize we were supposed to be evangelistic. We recognize who you are, Lord. We recognize we have responsibility in knowing you. We recognize that we're supposed to be on your side, not the devil's side. And we've done all these great things for you using our religious concepts, understandings, and philosophies. Lord, what do you have to say about that? He's an I, I, I never knew you. Who are you? You see, if you don't get God's vote, you will always be a stranger. And see, God don't vote on strangers. God only votes on the ones who are picked out. And God determined that those who are picked out are picked out 
by grace, and grace comes through obedience, not by works. That's what he was trying to tell the Jews. It's not about how many bake sales, how much money you raised, or you gave $10,000 to the deacon board, and all of those kinds of things. It's about grace, but you only get the grace when you are obedient to the instruction book. Instruction book, one church, Church of Christ. It's an instruction book. Amen. An instruction book. One Lord, one faith. One baptism. Not multiple, one baptism. That's in the instruction book. In the instruction book, there's only one way to glory. Only one way. Jesus says, I'm the way. And unless you come by me, you don't get there. Because you don't get God's fault if you're not in Christ. I'm old. I'm old. On, Pull these bro. horses in. On, I got to shut this down. <laughs> we'll take off again at our next launching date. <laughs> to the saints. As which is an invitation. Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1. And he talks about the Christian graces that should be developing. Around verse 5, he says. So then, brother, and add unto your faith. Yeah. Virtue. Yes, Moral courage. Uh -huh. One thing about righteousness, uh, while you walk that, you will need courage. Amen. 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 The key to courage is trust. You say, man, I got to be... No, no, no. no. The key to courage is trust. You know, I've never been one. You know, I got a lot of fears. You know, I'm a you know, dog. And, you know, I don't... No, 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 no. The key to courage is trust. Well, you know, I can't stand being alone. I get just... No, 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 no. The key to courage is trust. Because, see, where you'll face your greatest... Fears is as you walk with the Lord. When He takes a step, you don't want to take. All right. Come on. Break it. You finally get enough enough confidence to trust Him enough to take that one step, and you think, "Whew!" Then you look up, and He takes another step. That you don't understand. Mm. And you thought. You thought. Well, I thought at least I'd get a break here. Mm. But now he takes a step. That you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And what he tells you to do is. Trust. Mm -hmm. Me. Yes. See the key. The virtue. Is trust. Mm. When you have courage. You talk like. Three Hebrew boys. Amen. I don't know what God's going to do. I know what God told me to do. I'm going to do what God told me to do. You do what you want to do. But I'm going to stay with what God told me to do. You say you're going to do what to me? Well, you go ahead and take your best shot. <laughs> because I'm still going to do what God told me to do. Now, I know this about God. If God wants to get you off of me, He can do that. If God decides to let you do your thing, He can do that. Irregardless as to what God does in this situation, I'm just going to do what God told me to do. Hmm. I, I, that's really how you find the Lord. Yeah. Wait, 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 look, I, I know what the man says sound good. I want to know what the Bible says. Yeah. I know what the good pastor said about salvation. I want to know what the Bible says. Yeah. I know what they say about church stuff. I want to know what the Bible says. Because whatever God says, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. So when you have trust, so he says, add to your faith virtue, more courage, knowledge, 
Knowledge. How are you going to see if you're blind? Yeah. Knowledge opens your eyes. Right. Right. And, and, and you can't see. It's the, it's the substance of illumination. Amen. And you want the substance of illumination? Get some light. Amen. You say, look, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here in my life with this person over there. I'm trying to understand why I'm having a hard time with this co-worker. I'm trying to figure out why this supervisor and we are having, and how do I deal with this? Get some illumination. <laughs> no, 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 check with Oprah. <laughs> I, I, I read what, 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 what do they call the zodiac? Find out if they Libra, I mean a Leo, or a, a Sagittarius, a Scorpio, or a Scorpio, or whatever. Oh, don't be trying. That's not going to help you. That's just more darkness. If you really want to understand, get some illumination. You want to find out what's going on inside of the mixed emotions and feelings that you have, the confusing thoughts, the fears and anxieties, and you're trying to understand why you like this, get some illumination. Add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge. Knowledge temperance. Temperance. Self-control. Self-management. Self-management and impatience. And so he talks about these graces, but then he says, then he says, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you neither barren nor unfruitful. Amen. But then he goes on to give another warning in verse 10. He says, now look, brethren, therefore, make your call and election. an election sure. Yes. You can get voted on, but you can get impeached. Well, you, you can get voted on. But if you're not careful, you can get impeached. Yeah. And so make your calling and election sure. If these things be in you, they make you so you never mm -hmm. fall. Yeah. Anybody want to anybody want to be picked out today? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's all right. It's a process that takes place by grace. Yeah. And that's a gift that's only yeah. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. In Ephesians 1, after he talked about things summed up in Christ, and 2, he says, for by grace you are saved through faith. Okay? But that grace is in Christ Jesus. It's a gift. Now, is there anybody who wants to be picked out today? I'm not talking about by me. I'm talking about by the three votes that matter. And the three actually cast one vote. Because they're in that kind of agreement. Amen. So there won't be a one, two, three. There'll only be one. You'll say, wait a minute, where are the other two votes? The three are in agreement. They only cast one vote. That cuts it real, that cuts it real nice. Saved, unsaved. Saved, unsaved. Picked out, left out. Picked out, left out. Are you left out? You can be picked out by coming forward today. Believing in Christ, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ to be the Son of God, buried in the water grave of baptism for remission of your sins. If you are in the Lord, make your call. An election, sure. Because you need to understand, you say, well, I'm a good Christian. I'm a good member. I've been a good member of the church for a long time. I'm here to tell you, when it comes to the elect, good ain't good enough. Amen. 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 So, where, where, where do you get that? Because Peter was good. Yeah. You say, what? Well, I, well, what's wrong with Peter? I mean, I'm talking about Peter was good, but then Peter became great. Yes. Yeah. So when Peter was good, he was following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Peter was good, he knew who Jesus was. Matthew 16, whom the men say out of Son of Man, thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. That was when he was good. When Peter was good, Peter was planning to do a lot of great things for the Lord. Okay? It was sitting around the table. Peter was good. And Jesus tells them, he says, you know, he says, you all are going to scatter. You're going to run. You're going to fall, rather, because of me. He said, for it says, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So you all are going to be made to stumble because of me. Peter said, oh, Lord, no, nah. uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. They may stumble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not stumbling. 
See what you think. See, a good man will, 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 will have every intention of being committed to the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Every intention, every fiber to be committed to the Lord. A good man. Oh, no, Lord. Oh, no, no, no. You can count on me. I got your back. I'm holding up. I'm standing steadfast. I'm firm. I'm good. You can count on me. Jesus says, Peter, before the cock crows, you want to deny me three times. Peter says, Lord, 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 let me help you here. There is no way. I'm going to cut out on you. I'm ready to die for you. I'll die for you. There's no way I'm cutting out. See, see, a good man it, it will be committed to the Lord. A good man will have great intentions of being steadfast for the Lord. I said a good man. Peter was a good man. A good man will have every intention of doing that. But lo and behold, he ran and denied him and then the rooster crow Amen. you see that's what a good man will do but see good in the kingdom not good enough but praise be to God Peter became great and when Peter became great they lock him up in prison he just get a nap when they, when they got ready to crucify me, he said, you crucified me upside down. Because you know, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Savior. I done preached, I done ministered, I done served, I done done all these things. But in spite of all I've done with my life, I'm not even worthy to die like him. That's a great man. So for those who are in the Lord, as Peter says, as Peter says, Make your call. An election. An election. Sure. Sure. Right. sure. Make sure you're still living in a way God will keep you as the elect mm -hmm. and not as the impeached. Amen. Amen. Stop here. If you need Amen. to come, would you come on together?